Good morning, sports fans, and welcome to the defining moment. Right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. This is me, your boy Larry B. Free to here live on a beautiful Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday, March 14th. Y'all know what that means. It's Pi Day, y'all. It's Pi Day. Who loves pie? I love me some pie. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one, y'all. We have ourselves. The tournament, all set and ready to go for both the women's and men's. We have some extremely insane, and I'm talking about insane, NFL pregnancy going on. All the meanwhile, the NHL Bruins are simply on a path of destruction. I mean, this team is just gonna make it. They, they just got to their 10th loss of the season, you guys, and we are in the middle of March. Yeah, dominance. Also, there's another team in Boston that's pretty good. <laughs> Gotta tell ya, those Boston Celtics hanging out in second place right now in the East. This team looks special. But don't get too happy, Boston, because on Sunday, LAFC, the defending champions, went ahead and did away with the Revs 4-0. So let's just say not all is well in Boston, but what's going on with Bill? Is Mr. Belichick going to do his magic? Or will this team kind of just dwindle into a thing of the past? I don't think so, because Bill, (laughs) I always said, the dynasty ends when Bill goes. When Bill decides to call it a career, well then there you go, but... Be very afraid of the cats until then. (laughs) Anyway, with that said, plenty more to get into. How about Team USA, y'all? Starting things off with a nice little victory over Britain. Then getting mollywopped. That's right, I said it. Mollywopped by Mexico. And last night, returning the favor to Canada. The World Baseball Classic has been something to enjoy. Japan is just running through everybody if they were like if they were the Boston Bruins. So much more. We got some track and field champions to crown because the indoor championship is just ended. And my goodness, it was a great one. NCAA wrestling, of course, the tournaments are coming on up. Hawaii volleyball is something to enjoy. Man, they are a good team. I'll tell you that right now. The NHRA season has kicked off with the Gator Nats. I mean, the auto sports season is in full swing. We have the Champions League coming up this week, XFL news, some beach volleyball, NCAA volleyball, NCAA softball. Of course, the ladies are down to the Frozen Four in hockey. Oh my goodness, and how could we forget about March Madness? Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in live to your show for all that is sports. The defining moment right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, do you like teams that are tough, 
cities that are tougher, and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Shy town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing, and we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi-Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. Well, it's Tuesday, so you know what that means. You want the Cack Sack Show tonight, along with many other great ones. Man, we got a Tuesday is just our <laughs> our major sports day. I mean, we have major sports days every day here on IE Sports Radio. But I got to tell you right now... We got some good stuff coming on up tonight, of course. We love Buffalo sports. We got the Buffalo Huddle along with Miss Patty Bax tonight, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then it just goes for four hours straight. Right after her, we have Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. Right after them, we have Mr. Adam Karnick, who's in the chat room right now. Big ups to my boy, Mr. Adam Karnick. Thank you for, for tuning in this morning. Him and Mr. Zachary Puplis on the, on uh, the neutral zone. And then, of course, ending off the night with all things Vegas sports. With Mr. Kale Henderson. <laughs> Let me just say, I think he's going to have a lot to talk about tonight. Because we're going to get ourselves into a little bit of NFL free agency. Alrighty, so i got to tell you right now, this is huge. NFL free agency is probably one of the things that we may love the most that is off the field uh, during, well, in the off season. Okay, or let me rephrase that. The free agency is basically the thing that all of us football fans love, okay, next to actually on the field, okay? Uh, Don't get me wrong, we all love the combine, okay? You know me, I can break it down like a coach. I love it, I enjoy the combine. Uh, I really, really love the draft. Those are all awesome things. But the finished product is kind of what people love more because in the draft, we don't know who's who. We don't know who's doing what. But what we do know is that these free agents, okay, They're the ones who have already been battle-tested. They've been proven to be solid. And, well, these are the guys that you want, okay? These are the teams that you... Sorry, these are the players that can make teams in the offseason. I'm so serious. And, well, there's a fine example of that as... Let's just get the elephant out of the room. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Aaron Rodgers is officially a Jet. Yeah. (laughs) Like, we didn't know that was coming, right? But you know what? Good for him. Good for him. I really feel that Aaron Rodgers, you know, he was supposed to do this. Because 
it's just it's just one of those things where you kind of know what's happening you know you kind of know it's there but for some crazy reason it just hasn't happened yet that's kind of what this whole story was about and you know we all saw it he just Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to return to the Packers last year or two years ago or whatever the story was Jordan Love when they first drafted him they didn't like it they were irritated you know what I mean all these things Aaron Rodgers was unhappy with the organization we all knew this was gonna happen right didn't we and then guess what it happens so yesterday uh you know breaking news happens and well Good for Rodgers, good for the Jets. The Jets have a stacked defense. The offense can get a little bit better, but that's exactly what they're doing. The offense is now, from what I saw this morning, I was at the gym after getting my lift, I was getting my my run in, and I happened to see that the Green Bay Packers are going after Lazard. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they want the receiver to go with the package, all right? They they want it, and we'll see. We'll see if they can make that happen. They're probably just telling the Packers, hey, look, guys, it's have a fresh slate. Draft some receivers. Get your new quarterback in there. You know, your quarterback that you've had for a couple of years sitting behind Rodgers. You know, he may be another Rodgers the way that Favre was Rodgers, you know. I'm sorry, the way the way that Rodgers was Favre, I mean, behind him. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, is they're basically saying, hey, Hit the reset button, y'all. Give us this receiver and the quarterback. You guys have fun. We'll take a team that can compete, actually. And, you know, I think everybody wins here. We'll get some, you know, you get some things in exchange. And, you know, what? I think that works. I think that actually works. So, will it happen? We shall see. So, moving on to the rest of the NFL. Man, there has been some moves. Uh, Chris Lindstrom yesterday. I just want to give a major, major shout out to the Atlanta Falcons. Good for you, of course. Very, very, very good job in signing this guy. I remember seeing him in the Senior Bowl years ago next to Risner. And, I mean, those two dominated the right side of the line. And seeing this guy now, he is an absolute stud. Does a great job on the field. And you know what? He's somebody you definitely want to have in the trenches. Now, Atlanta has way more problems than this. But you know what? At the end of the day, good for them. They pick up a they conti- sorry they contain a very strong alignment there. So good for them. Also, Bates and Ellis they go ahead and sign for uh, you know a couple years here, solid contracts. And it looks like the Ravens. I mean, we have no idea. There's a exclusive tag, I guess. Or all these things, right? All these different things that you can see for the directions of the Ravens and I mean they let go of Clayus Campbell what are they trying to do with Jackson I don't know but we're going to find out sooner or later so that one is you know to be announced TBA moving forward I love the Connor McGovern pickup here for uh for the Bills way to make that happen solid signing right there uh the Bears of course Tremaine Edmonds I love this over from the Bills I mean I thought this was an amazing pickup here the Bills are really trying to make this happen and if they really want to make this happen I'm telling you right now go get Austin Eckler oh my gosh he's he is talking to the teams right now DJ Moore is the man I'm so happy that he's going to be over there now you got Fields another target and now you have yourself a solid linebacker now in that core why not go get Eckler it just makes sense it's either watch he's gonna end up a lion (laughs) and they're gonna pay for it so I'm just saying I think they should go pick him up Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson headed to the Browns thought that was a pretty solid pickup there franchise tag from Mr. Tony Pollard uh for the Cowboys good that's they need to lock him up you need that bad that two back tandem nowadays so just overall great pickups here lots and lots and lots of great players staying getting the tag of course Evan Ingram another player getting the tag in Jacksonville now we get over to the Raiders and I just gotta say Josh Jacobs is the man I'm so happy about this too see I just gotta I gotta give a few yo's this morning right to some of the guys who I think are the men on that team and Josh Jacobs you want a franchise tag in Raiders um I've been a long time Raider fan and I'm very very happy to see this usually not happy with what I see in the field but I'm happy with this because dang it you need to keep him you know I think McDaniels decided to finally run the ball half of the season and sees what this guy can actually do. So why not? It only makes sense, right? 
solid pickup or solid keep, I guess you could say, for the Raiders is Josh Jacobs, man, a strong running back. And then, of course, another elephant in the room, Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, Jimmy G is solid. I like it. I'll take him. You know, I, I it is what it is. Um, I... I've always loved Derek Carr. I've really wanted him to stay and be a and be a Raider. But at the end of the day, the Raiders kind of did him dirty. The relationship was kind of getting stale anyway. But all the best to him over in New Orleans. And as for Jimmy G, it's a new start for him. He played under Brady for a while. You know, he was under Bill. And then he did his thing for the Niners. Unfortunately, injuries got him. It's a fresh start for him in Vegas. Let's see what this guy can do. Solid stuff right there. I really, really like that. Of course, we all know another elephant in the room, Jalen Ramsey, of course, heading over to the Dolphins, which I thought that was great because, honestly, another new beginning. Um, Ramsey is, he got his bowl. You know what I mean? Like, he he's really going to do something solid things over there in Miami. Let him continue his career and do his best. So, uh, I like that a lot. And then there's a lot of different pickups, you guys. I really, you know, once again, we have some, some from franchise tags here. Saquon Barkley is another one of them. Uh, a big pickup was Hargrave. I think yesterday everyone loved that. Hargrave to the Niners, making that defensive line even nastier. Um, I thought that was great. Kelsey, of course, staying with the Philadelphia Eagles, as he should. Just overall, great stuff, you guys. And I really, really, really like that. I just get a little bit of a recap here from CBS Sports. Go check out the rest of this article. Sean and McCar- sorry, McCarston. Uh, go check it out. Awesome, awesome article here of the latest going on in free agency. And I just need a little a little uh, wrap-up there of yesterday. Man, I was all over the three-and-out Twitter. And you know what? I loved it. <laughs> I loved every moment of it. So many great pickups and lots going on in the NFL. So with that said, you want more of that three and out, of course, coming on up this week. Do not miss it with me or boy Larry B. So moving forward, shifting gears, as I love to say, into NASCAR, man. So, of course, into some auto sports. This is what I really, really love and enjoy. That NASCAR is incredible for this. That we get racing every weekend. Formula One, IndyCar, cool, I love it. But it's like, man, come on, like we want more. <laughs> we have to wait. Uh, this NASCAR is in your face, and William Byron does it again. Back to back weeks, y'all. Yeah, that's my dude. The 24 back in victory lane, and congratulations, amazing job. This is his sixth career victory. And back-to-back, he won last week in Vegas. Now he just won this last past week in Phoenix. Now the Western Swing has concluded. NASCAR is headed on over to Atlanta. That should be some fun coming up this week. Of course, as we know, I believe this weekend as well, we do get some Formula 1, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix coming on up here on the 19th. Looking forward to this. Will Verstappen continue? Or will, you know, who will it be? Sergio Perez was so close but so far last week. Has Mercedes finally figured it out? So much to get into, right? And just something that you really, really, really want to see. I want to see all these teams competitive in Formula 1. I really do. And now that you see Lewis Hamilton struggling in a car that you know can't the car can't reach Hamilton's full potential. You know what I mean? So I want to see those silver arrows back up there. Ferrari, you know, it's it's there. You know, it's there. <laughs> um, I, I really feel that Charles Leclerc, you know, this this is a solid team. They are. Ferrari, there was a couple of years where it was kind of down. But this year, can it be the year where we finally get everybody can we have our cake and eat it too can we see everybody you know what i mean fernando alonso that was pretty cool seeing him last week i mean aston martin is here they're here for it you know like we have i'm telling you man the red bulls are 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 in town you know they're they're making things happen early and often and ferrari just a team that once again you want to see all of these teams strong who will it be this week well I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go, I picked Perez last week for nearest the win. I'm definitely, definitely going to take Verstappen this week <laughs> because gosh dang it, the guy has a knack for doing this and he won it last year here. I'm going to say he gets it done. Uh, next up, 
we do have. And of course, for NASCAR this week, I would love to go the trifecta for Byron, but I don't know. I'm going to go Harvick, man. I, I think, you know, he's been good at Atlanta. At least I think he is. Uh, but, you know, he really is a solid, solid, solid driver. I am so excited to see this guy get out there and do his thing. Um, last go around for him so he got fifth place last week i'm gonna go with harvick man he's he's gonna be on it and of course indycar as we know returns on the 26th at, at the circuit of the americas gotta love it there coda awesome formula one track and well you see nascar there now you see all these awesome motorsports there and of course this last past weekend my personal favorite the nhra got underway at the gator nationals Big hats off to Gage Herrera winning it in Pro Stock Motorcycle. Troy Coughlin Jr. winning it in Pro Stock. In Funny Car, of course, Mr. Matt Hagen, the guy who just continues to win. And, of course, we know Mr. Matt Salinas. I'm oh, sorry, Mike Salinas getting it done in Top Fuel. Love it. Always, always, always great stuff there in the NHRA. So super excited for a good weekend there. And, well, the NHRA is now off to Arizona coming up next weekend. And, uh, well, I'm really excited for this because, once again, the NHRA, you never know who's going to win. That's why we don't even include it in nearest to win because it's almost impossible. <laughs> you can't you can't include it. It's just it's you pick somebody. I dare you. It's hard. I mean, you can, but eh, sometimes it's definitely not easy. So, uh big ups to everybody in the chat room by the way. Uh thanks for getting me to work while well, you were very welcome Mr. Adam Karnick. And uh yeah, what's going on, Kale? This is let's celebrate our 2023 fourth place finish for the Raiders. Absolutely, Kale. Yeah, uh, I don't see nothing special here. Like I said, I'm excited for Jimmy G. I really am. Um, but I don't see anything special with the Raiders. I mean, the franchise tag on, on Josh Jacobs, cool, but there's nothing else that screams at me. Hey, the Raiders are going to be really good this year. So anyway, um, we talked some free agency in the NFL. We talked a little bit of auto sports. Let's get on over to the World Baseball Classic, y'all, because, oh my goodness, has this been really, really, really good. Uh, I mean, just incredible scores, man. I mean, yesterday we seen Korea extreme, just Blow out China. I think it went to like five innings. They mercyed them twenty two to twenty or uh, twenty sorry, twenty two to two. And you take a look at some of these teams and Japan is rolling through everybody. They are the favorite, at least I think. I'm really, really happy to see this. I really am. I wanna see in the World Baseball Classic, I wanna see that that fluctuation. I wanna see strong teams go head to head right now inside of the uh the pools it's incredible pool a everybody has two wins now it's going to come down to differential this is why you see teams running up the score because well it's going to have to come down to that if it's two 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 i mean you know so japan a solid four and oh right now in pool b in pool c i mean you know not everyone's gone yet but usa two and one taking a Thump on the head to Mexico a couple days ago, man. I was, you know, proud proud uh, of, of the Mexican team, of course, as, you know, it's half my heritage. But as I always say, before before anything, American, y'all. Red, white, and blue stars and stripes. That is my country. And I am very, very, very proud. Very, very proud American. And seeing that the other day really sucked because I at least wanted a good game. I wanted USA to win, of course. But wasn't to be. Anyway, yesterday, America, uh, USA was like, oh, yeah, we remember how to play baseball. And they absolutely destroyed Canada. And uh, 12 to 1. So this week, the United States, of course, we got a couple more games, I think. I believe here we got uh, the Columbia coming up on Wednesday. And then coming up on, that's it. <laughs> that's the last of the group play, I believe. So Mexico, uh, Japan is already through. And they are taking Italy, who is also already through from Group A. Who will it be coming up next? I mean, this, of course, is always to tell. Very excited. Venezuela looking good in Pool D. Puerto Rico, of course, in Pool D as well in second place. Who will it be? We shall see. Gotta love it, y'all. Always some fun here with the World Baseball Classic. And, well, with that said, I'm going to take myself a quick little break, grab me some coffee. And when we get back, we're talking plenty more sports. You are listening to the Defining Moment right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this.
Hello, everyone. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr., and I'm welcoming you to Taking Another Lap with the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. Yes, this is the Extra Mile with me and my co hosts, Christopher Lehman and Michael Ward. We talk everything racing from NASCAR to IndyCar to Formula One to limited hydroplanes, endurance racing, the NHRA, and more. So come join us for an hour of great racing talk and a lot of fun as well on the Extra Mile. Thursdays at 8 p.m. only on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour, every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans, where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always willing to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen... The trades keep on coming. As I mentioned earlier, <laughs> I mean, we're just getting crazier, right? So I'm taking a look here, of course, all over Twitter. As we know, we have Lazard, which is a possible now. Well, no, not a possible. He is a target for uh, for those New York Jets. Might as well take the receiver with the quarterback. We shall see. Plenty more coming your way. As you just saw right now in the chat room, our boy Mr. Kale Henderson. So check out my mock draft. It's really solid. We'll go check that out, man. Of course, make sure to go check, make sure to go check that out. I want to turn that into a blog. Put it on the IE Sports Radio blog. Just saying. But everybody, go check it out. Show Kale some love, man. And uh, you want to check out his show, of course, tonight. The guy can talk his Vegas sports. I love it. He can talk all sports, but definitely love it. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and move on in to... Okay, so let's go ahead and roll, man. I'm telling you, so many things to get into today. And MLB... Spring training, I mean, not the craziest stuff going on here. I mean, it really is just centered around the baseball, the World Baseball Classic, which we know this. Uh, But, of course, lots of youngsters in there getting their chance. Let's take a look on, you know, what these young players can do. Do not miss out on spring training games. They're a lot of fun to watch. Some of these guys, this is the chance of a lifetime for them, so please... Keep it heavy on those MLB spring training games as we are just weeks away, y'all. Like the actual opening day is March 30th. We are two weeks away coming this Thursday. I mean, awesome, right? So really happy about that. Got to love some MLB baseball. Okay, well, moving on over, keeping it on the diamond, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. I'm going to women's softball right now. Oklahoma, 17-1. UCLA, currently 22-1. These two teams, I feel like they're on a collision course. Number one just continues to dominate. In five yesterday, destroyed South Dakota State, 8-0. And, you know, some big upsets as well. South Carolina over number 14, LSU. Just, you never know what's going to happen in the world of softball. Wisconsin talking about a solid team here. They don't really have the ranking to back it up, but knocking off number nine Alabama yesterday, seven to six, was certainly 
a big up for them. And guess lots and lots and lots of more great uh, great games here in softball. We had, of course, the duel in the desert. Number twenty four Arizona knock it off number twenty Arizona fourteen to I'm sorry four to three. So keep it locked here for some NCAA softball. As I mentioned, Oklahoma, they did it last year. Again, can they win another title? This program has always been so strong. And let's just face it, it's a big possibility they may get it done again. So moving on over into some NCAA men's baseball. LSU is the cream of the crop. 15-1, and one, absolutely dominating everyone in their path. And this school... I'm telling you, they have been a baseball powerhouse. A lot like Oklahoma being a a softball powerhouse. LSU, I mean, they have gotten out players. I mean, Bregman. I mean, I'm just saying, there are so many MLB players that have worn that purple and gold of LSU. And yesterday, in seven innings, 13 to 1 over Samford. I mean, just continuing to dominate. We did have an upset yesterday. Pittsburgh over number 21, Florida State. Thought that was pretty cool. Also, LMU over number 7, Vanderbilt. I'm telling you, you got to love these upsets. You never know when they're going to come. USC, I think yesterday was probably one of the best. I mean, that was incredible. I loved it. USC knocking off number 2, Stanford, 4 to 1. Big ups to my Trojans for getting that done yesterday. Awesome, awesome job. And Tennessee, last year, a team that really had a lot of promise in the baseball world. Um, Just looking right now, hanging out at number two. Uh, It's it's always a show. I know, and I'm taking that from the video game, the show. But that's exactly what it is here with NCAA baseball. Incredible stuff. And once, once again, keep it locked here to the defining moment for the latest on that. So, all right, so we've gotten through some auto sports today, lots of NFL action, and well, we're going to go ahead and move it on now into a little bit of hockey, because yeah, this is kind of a big deal, as I mentioned earlier, the Boston freaking Bruins, y'all, yeah, (laughs) this team had just lost their 10th game of the season. Guys, it's March. (laughs) We're in the middle of March. We are like a month away from the season ending and going into playoffs, okay? We're like actually a little bit under a month, I think. And they just lost their 10th game. They have played 65 freaking games. And they have lost straight up their last 10. Oh, sorry, they have lost, okay, barely their 10th. I am like tripping right now. How good this this team is. And my favorite part about how strong this team is. Is the fact that there's like no remorse. You know, this team isn't slowing down. They're not trying to uh, reserve anybody. Nah, man. <laughs> They're playing hockey. And you look at a team this dominant. And you just wonder to yourself. You know, how far can this team really go? You know, the President's Trophy is a great thing to obtain. But everybody wants Lord Stanley's Cup, you know. And it's happened where we've seen teams dominate through the season, not quite like this, but not get it done in the end. And I don't know, man. I think this is the year that Boston's actually going to make that happen. I'm sure it's happened in the past, but Boston, it's going to be very hard to pick against Boston in the playoffs. I mean, I've already got them as my Stanley Cup winners. It's You don't go into March and barely go double digits and losses. I mean... (laughs) That's a special hockey team. And, you know, you got to look around the rest of the league. They are dominant over everybody else. Okay, they're the only team with 50 wins right now. Uh, They are towering over everybody else. The closest team to them is uh, Carolina. Crazy, right? The Carolina Hurricanes, and they have 43. (laughs) I mean, incredible team. I love what they got going on. But take a look around the rest of the NHL. Let me take a look here at the Metropolitan Wins Court, of course. We have Carolina with 43 wins, and right behind them, you know, you take a look, uh, actually, sorry, it's 44 (laughs) with uh, the New Jersey Devils. Didn't need to overlook them. New Jersey, hey, they've got some solid, you know, they got some work, and I like it. I like what they got going on over there in New Jersey. A very, very, very good team. 
Um, I don't know if, if they're going to be a problem to the Boston Bruins, but hey, a team that can definitely make a deep playoff run. Uh, going over to the West here, Minnesota. After having a couple down years, yeah, it's kind of good. Good for them, right? Thirty-eight victories apiece. Or 30 victories for them and for Winnipeg, actually, for both those teams in the Central, looking at the top of that division. And then moving over to the West, the Golden Knights are still there. They are in and around the top. <laughs> and them, the Kings, are kind of duking out right now. You can't forget about the Kraken, though. They're not far behind. Edmonton with 36, the Kraken with 37, Los Angeles with 38, and Vegas with 41. I, I love the battle. I love the battle here. Uh, the Central as well. Minnesota, Winnipeg, both 38 apiece. And then Dallas and Colorado, the defending champions, both with 37 apiece. So, you know, there is a lot there. Uh, in, the, in the East, it's kind of, I don't want to say decided, but it's, a, it's like a two-horse race or a one-horse race. In the Atlantic, Boston ran away with that thing. It is what it is. Toronto, they're closest with 40. Cool. But Boston is the big picture there. Then you get to the Metropolitan, and it really is between the Devils and the Hurricanes. 44 wins for the Devils and 43 wins for the Hurricanes. So, just more to look into. Um, I don't know. Avalanche looked good last night, defeating the Canadians. And the Kraken just took a thump on the head yesterday from the Kraken. But overall, I, I feel like right now, just, just beating the Bruins is going to be tough. So <laughs> we're going to see moving forward. All right. Next up here, let's go ahead and roll on in to some women's hockey because the final, f- oh, sorry, the Frozen Four is all set and ready. Oh my goodness, it's going to be awesome. Uh, you got to love these games. I mean, these quarterfinals were awesome. Of course, dominating, well, I don't want to say dominating, but they've been great all year. Wisconsin making their way in, defeating Colgate 4-2. to two. Then we have here, Minnesota defeating Minnesota Duluth 3-0, moving their way in. Next up, we have Northeastern take, uh, defeating Yale 4-1. to And, of course, finishing it off, Ohio State, O-H, I-O, defeating Quinnipiac 5-2. to Here it is, y'all. The stage is set. The Frozen Four is here. And it's awesome. You know, you got to love the fact that this team, this Wisconsin team is here for it. And I don't know. They're my pick right now. I I love what this team has going. I think this is a very solid, very, very, very solid team. And they're going to be my pick. But the Frozen Four, of course, never doubt anybody and know that these teams are ready to get it down. All right. So we're going to have Wisconsin taking on Minnesota And on the other side, we're going to have Ohio State taking on Northeastern. We shall see who wins that thing. Also, Men's Selection Sunday, of course. Well, this coming Sunday, we have the NCAA. uh, Let's see here. The NCAA Women's Frozen Four. So coming on up here, we have Selection Sunday as well for the men's. So... Frozen Four for the ladies, Championship Sunday coming up this Sunday, and Selection Sunday for the men. You gotta love some hockey, right? So, with that said, I'm gonna take myself a short break, and when we get back, we, of course, are going to jump on in to plenty more sports. You're listening to the Defining Moment right here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Some say that Indiana is just a flyover state. Flatlands and cornfields, barns and country roads. What if I told you Indiana is the crossroads of America? What if I told you in all other states, basketball is just basketball? In Indiana, basketball is life. Crowded high school basketball gyms on a Friday night and every barn with a basketball rim and a frayed, worn-out net. If you're interested in the heartbeat of America and if you're interested in sports, If you have Hoosier running through your veins, the Crossroads Pod with Aaron X is made for you. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Each and every week, the Crossroad Pod covers all of Indiana sports. The pride of the horseshoe of the Indianapolis Colts. The blue collar, gold swagger of the Indiana Pacers. The relentless pursuit of a sixth banner for the Indiana Hoosiers. The swing of the hammer of the Purdue Boilermakers, the swoop of the Cardinals of Ball State, 
the summoning of the echoes of the Notre Dame fighting Irish, the growl of the Bulldogs of Buckley, the intensity of an Indiana fever, the chop of the Indianapolis Indians. At the Crossroads Pod, if it is Indiana, we've got you covered. More than cornfields, more than country back roads, the crossroads of America. Join me, Aaron X, every week. It's nothing but net. and becoming a Buffalo sports fan. Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, go Bills! Make sure to catch Miss Patty Bax tonight. She is awesome. And, of course, all of our great shows here at IE Sports Radio. Once again, your direct feed for all that is sports. All right, so so we're getting into the waning stages here of the show today. It's been a good one so far. Let's make sure we go ahead and talk a little bit about what's coming up tomorrow and today. The UEFA Champions League getting into the end of the round of 16, second leg of the second wave, I guess you can call it. We already had... Of course, talked about them last week. Four teams are through to the round of eight. It has Benfica, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, and AC Milan are on their way. Next up, of course, today we have FC Porto and Inter Milan. Milan leads 1-0 on aggregate. I am, of course, an Inter Milan fan. Who will win it? We shall see. But, of course, let's take a look at... Well, the rest of these games, <laughs> I'm just saying, not going to not gonna overlook FC Porto, but really, really, really excited for Inter Milan. Let's see how far this team can go this year. Man City taking on Leipzig as well. Red Bull Leipzig, they're both tied on aggregate right now. So let's see who moves forward after today. Then on March 15th, tomorrow, we have Napoli taking on Frankfurt. Napoli leads 2-0. And then Real Madrid taking on Liverpool as Madrid leads 5-2 to two on aggregate. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a big one there. So we'll see how that goes. And then moving on forward now into a little bit of MLS. Um, You know, not the most to talk about, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of the MLS. Uh, but as of right now, I mean, just, you know, not a lot to get into. This league just started a few weeks back. And as of right now, we do see that LAFC is looking very much at the team that they've been. Also, St. Louis is getting it. I'm loving what they got going on. And this has been such a good, 
good, good sports city that they deserve this. And this team right now is looking pretty good. They're 3-0 and on the season. Hey, let's see what St. Louis City SC can do this year, all right? So after that, of course, let's go ahead and shift a little bit more, some more gears. I once again just want to take this moment to say thank you very much for tuning in live to the Defining Moment right here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Taking a quick gander into all sports around the country, I just got to say it has been quite the year already getting underway. And uh, when it comes down to it, you know me, I talk about the the uh, European leagues rather quickly because there's not much there to get into. Uh, later on this week, we'll get more into that, but I'll tell you, right now, the the most exciting is going to be the World Baseball Classic. I think that's where everybody's mind is. Everyone's in the zone for that, and it's just, it's going to be something to watch for the rest, okay? Uh, I do want to bring up real quick that we are, let's go ahead and move it forward here, we are, of course, into the last few days. And the quarterfinals will start coming up on Thursday. Actually, no, tomorrow. They start as early as tomorrow. We still have some group stage play, but we do have some quarterfinals as well. So with that said, you guys, um, let's go ahead and jump on into a little segment that I like to call Damn Son. This last past weekend, NCAA Volleyball has seen a giant continue to dominate. Really, really cool to see such a strong team continue to be stronger. And well, the defending champions two years in a row are not ready to let up that crown. This last past weekend, UCLA will head on over to Hawaii and knock them off in the first game. But the second game, it was a fun one to watch. But when you see Hawaii play, you have two words. Damn, son. Damn, son. This team is absolutely out of their mind. Taking the first set, knowing that UCLA is the number two team in the nation, but saying, hey, we don't care who you are. You're not going to come up in this arena and run us out of it. You already beat us yesterday. We're going to, nah, not happening today. And it didn't. The second, the second set was pretty good. UCLA wins that thing, and they went back and forth. In the third set, Hawaii meant business and got it done. And oh my God. Goodness, damn, son! Set number four was something to watch. Hawaii <laughs> will make this thing a thriller, and I'll tell you, this is just a team that you already know is so poised for yet another one. The three peat is there for the taking. This team is about as strong as it gets, and I love how strong this team plays in the clutch. It's like there's another gear in there, man. And what I'm looking forward to the absolute most with Hawaii Volleyball <clears throat> is that this team continues to do what they've been doing all season. They have been such a dominant team. The rankings have shown it time and time again. And well, here we go. Now, Penn State, like I said, Penn State will actually win the invitation. They will knock off Hawaii. Okay? Earlier this week. But, it was Hawaii who knocked off number two, UCLA, to finish off this invitation. And... This is something you don't see very often. You see a team that can rebound even after getting hit so hard. And once again, these are the moments we live for. Those defining moments of sports. Big shout out to my boy, Mr. Terran Rodriguez, of course, 
covering all things volleyball. He had a great show last night on Set Point. Catch him Monday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Once again, y'all, the moments that make you say, damn, son, because that's exactly what you say when you see this team play as well as they can. Very, very excited for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Let's see what this team does moving forward. That is my time. That is a wrap. I'm really excited because this has been a fun show, and I'm glad that I had to be able to be here with you guys today. Now, there's a little bit of surprise coming up with a funny moment. I may or may not do it. We shall see. <laughs> I know I'm mentioning it, and I'm over here considering it still. But it's a possibility. Now, what that is, we shall see. But I'm really, 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 really looking forward to the opportunity. It's my decision, but <laughs> we shall see what happens. Okay. As for this week in sports, it's been a great one. The NBA, we're going to end off with because, well, you know, the MLB, I mean, I'm sorry, the NBA has been something to watch. Milwaukee and Boston being the strong team that they are. It's going to be hard to pick between either of those two in the East. And it's certainly in the West. Denver, I think they're just going to run away with it. They've been strong. I believe they'll be the team to represent the West. Then, of course, March Madness starts today. Get those brackets filled out. Get on the Ice Sports Radio bracket. We have ourselves two games starting today. Southeast Missouri State taking on Texas A&M, Public Christie. And Pittsburgh taking on Mississippi State in the first four. Then, of course, tomorrow, Fair Dickinson and Texas Southern go head-to-head. -head, and Nevada and Arizona State. In the women's tournament, tomorrow, Mississippi State taking on Illinois. And Sacred Heart taking on Southern. And then on Thursday, St. John's taking on Purdue. And Monmouth, uh, Monmouth taking on Tennessee Tech. Ladies and gentlemen, fill out those brackets. Do not hurt your brains in the process. Because, boy, you can get brain racked real fast. Thank you all for joining me today. It's been a fun one. Really, really love having both of you guys talking tons of sports. And enjoying every moment of it. You guys... I will keep this show going, and we will keep Ice Sports Radio going. You can follow me at Boy Larry B at the C-H-E-M-3-L-B-5-3. Follow Ice Sports Radio as a whole at I-D-S-R. Oh, sorry, Ice Sports Radio. All over social media. Check out the website, iceportsradio.com. Show us some love, y'all. We have plenty to get into. Super excited for what we got going on at Ice Sports Radio. Tons of great shows all over the place in your face. And that's how we do it. We thank you all so very much for being a part of this and showing us love. It's been such a great year of sports so far. And that's just how it goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready to rock and roll. Follow all of IE Sports Radio. And USRNs and uh, Blood to Sports Radio. The coverage on Mr.com for March Madness. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. With that said, y'all, it's been a fun one. I thank you all so very much for being a part of it. And showing love. And we appreciate your support each and every week. For me, your boy Larry B. Thank you for the chat room. 
to Adam Carnick and Mr. Kelly. Thank you guys all so very much for being a part of it. And, well, let's see what we got going on this week. You are now tuned in live to the Defining Moments. And, well, we are tuning out. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless. <laughs>